All right, so guys, I just have a question. I need someone to help me explain, I, you know, NASA, Elon Musk. We could get Neil deGrasse Tyson, Bill Nye, right? Why is this globe behind me? Why is the water not sticking to the to the ball here? Why, why is water seeking and finding level and then contained by an ice wall or a concrete wall in this case? Guys, they're mocking us. Make it make sense. So today we are talking about the Coriolis force, right? And if it's real or not, let's dive in. In physics, the Coriolis force is an inertial or fictitious force that acts on an object in motion. Can we go back? F fictitious. Definition, please? No problem, I gotcha. Fictitious, not real or true, being imaginary or having been fabricated. You don't say. Now, despite what we were able to literally find out in seconds on a Google search, let's continue on. So if the Coriolis force is real, what is it? The Coriolis effect describes a pattern of deflection taken by objects not firmly connected to the ground as they travel long distances around Earth. Keywords, not firmly connected to the ground, as highlighted. So for argument's sake, we're going to say that that's true, right? And the reason that the bullet's affected is because it is not connected to the ground like the shooter, right? So let's just, let's try to apply that to other things. Now, if the helicopter is connected to the ground, makes perfect sense that the Coriolis effect would have to affect it. But if the helicopter is hovering, shouldn't it not be able to wait for its destination to come to it? Now, this does not just apply to helicopters. Airplanes are the same thing. So if an airplane is traveling east to west with the spin of the earth being 1,000 miles per hour and the airplane travel on average being 550, it would never be able to actually catch up to its destination. And the opposite, if the plane was going west to east against the spin, it would literally get to its destination one and a half times faster than if it was traveling east to west. Now, once you get the Globers with the, the helicopter, the airplane, and just a little bit of logic, they'll start saying, like, weather and patterns, they're going the opposite direction, man. These are just like star trails. <laughs> they're all going east to west, dude. If you're looking down, east to west is left to right. If you're looking up, east to west is right to left. It's the perspective of the viewer. Now, when you got the Globers big mad, oh, they're getting real mad. What about drains? Drains, they go clockwise in the north and counter... Not true. <laughs> the drains have already, this has already been debunked. You, you can have drains going opposite directions in the same hemisphere. It all has to do with which way the water is poured into the sink, the bowl, the tub, whatever it is that you're draining. So before you start letting some pseudoscience article or pseudoscience image dictate your reality, get out there and start doing some unbiased scientific method experiments. All right, so we're talking about the moon, okay? Uh, we all see the moon during the day being crescent or just not full, whatever. We can see blue sky through the moon. And a lot of people are like, oh man, you know, that's just it's the part of the moon that isn't being illuminated through the sun's light. Okay, well, you know, let's not stop there. Let's go into like some heat signatures, some thermal photography. Where, you know, where it, it where is it? It wouldn't matter. You know, this part of the, the moon would still be warm or hot, would still have a heat signature, whether or not the direct sunlight is hitting it or not. Just because the direct sunlight's not on the moon does not mean that the other aspect or other half of the moon would not be warm enough to create a heat signature. Let's not stop there. Infrared photography. Same thing. Anything that's invisible but emits any type of heat, which again, something that is reflecting heat, sunlight, would be what there would be some sort of signature that would not match what we can't see in reality during the day i mean we don't have to stop there are no photography styles that can show the unilluminated aspect of the moon period now if i'm off base if i'm you know what i'm saying is so crazy it's just blasphemy please show me okay another rock that you can see through and, and you know a, a solid rock that you can see through Another aspect of the moon that proves it is not reflecting sunlight and it's not a ball, okay? If you do um, experiments to test the moon light, it is colder than moon shade, which you know, obviously means that it's not reflecting any type of warm heat or sunlight. Okay, so we can literally see through the moon. We can do experiments to prove that moonlight is colder than moon shade, obviously debunking the wild claim that the moon is reflecting warm sunlight from 93 million miles away. Well, just to top it off, these are how, uh, you know, solid spheres reflect light. 
This is what we see. <laughs> we don't see, you know, God, which image is not like the rest? All right, so today we're talking about wide angle lenses, okay, more commonly referred to as fisheye lenses. But before we do that, we need to know what a regular lens is, right? A normal lens is also called a standard lens. It's a lens with a focal length between 35 to 50 millimeters. <laughs> Good to know. So what's a wide angle lens? Any lens between 35 and 24 millimeters is considered wide, and anything between 24 and 18 is considered ultra wide. Now we are constantly shown images like this, you know, with this curve here, right, from space. That's the ISS, I mean, wow. But wait a minute, why is the Earth, or the curve of the Earth, at the elevation of the ISS look identical to what we see people use on mountaintops with wide angle lenses? Wide angle lens at ground level. <laughs> Identical curve. Uh, guys, what's going on? Now, guys, these are just regular people taking photos. Now, I want you to see without the fisheye lens, but at 35 focal level, it's level. Now, with the fisheye lens, but at 35 focal. So they're both at 35. One has the lens and one doesn't. You see what I'm saying? Then I come across the Flat Earth fact checkers. I find the Flat Earth debunkers. They're saying that this is a wide angle lens <laughs> and that this is an ultra wide angle lens. <laughs> Unfortunately for them, I looked further. And what did I find? I found a photography website selling the exact same photo with a, what's that say? A wide angle lens versus a normal lens. Wide angle, not ultra wide, wide angle lens in a normal, not a wide angle. This is a normal lens. The deception is everywhere, folks. Now I know what you're thinking. Mike, I saw the, I saw the energy drink, man. You know, he jumped off the curb. Look, wow, look at that curb. That's amazing. But interestingly enough, the, the failed actor turned astrophysicist poster child, Neil deGrasse Tyson, when asked about this, you think you see curve at the height, Felix Baumgartner jump? Man, that thing is flat. So which is it? Tons of curve? We're on a, on a basketball. That thing is flat. NASA, Elon, if you guys could link me, I got questions. So today we are talking about Aristophanes and his experiment because believe it or not, in 2023, there are still people that think that this is a proof of the globe and somehow that that was proven by Aristophanes. So let's jump in. Over here to my right, it says that Aristophanes allegedly proved the circumference of the earth by measuring the shadow angles at different locations on the same meridian. Okay, fair enough. Now, if we look at it, it says parallel sun rays over hypothetical earth. Well, let's stop there. Parallel sun rays. We don't see sun rays as parallel in reality. Yeah, we see sun rays like this a lot. These are called crepuscular rays, and there are also what are known as anti-crepuscular rays. Now, if you look, this is an angle. You know, these these are not coming in 90 degrees or parallel to the to, to the Earth to the sun. It's not happening, guys. Now, and second thing, I don't know if you noticed the second thing. You notice how like we have gaps in the clouds here, up here, here, over here. The light seems to be staying local, local to the source, the sun. <laughs> Interesting. So now we know that the Aristophanes, based on a ball, is parallel rays coming in. Well, we can already prove through observable science that the sunlights are not always parallel. So let's come over here. Divergent sun rays on the flat earth, right? So same thing, local sun on a level plane. It's possible. So what we have here is an inconclusive experiment and does not prove flat earth or globe earth. <laughs> nice try. Now, if you're a critical thinking person, you you know, you're looking for truth, um, you got to really stop and ask yourself, you know, who's lying? You know, this was not, th this experiment was not put in textbooks as, you know, this was a, a way that we, we started questioning the earth or we were trying to figure out where do we live and no, this was, this was touted as absolute fact on how we proved scientifically that we're on a ball. And it could not be further from the truth. So then, again, is this guy is this guy a liar? And he's just he's just making up stories. Is our is our governor are, are the leaders of our world, our scientists, our astronomers, so naive as to just think this is proof? Or do you think it's possible that the winners of war have rewritten history through textbooks to help indoctrinate the future generations? So today, I would love to debunk a common misconception or an experiment that has duped the masses for far too long. And what am I talking, Mike, what are you talking about? I'm talking about the full cost pendulum, calm down. Yeah, 
people think that because this they, they can get this to move in a circular motion, that means that the Earth is spinning. Oh. Now, little does the average person know, this ball never starts moving unless someone or something applies a force. <laughs> Crazy, right? Now, I don't know about you, but I was taught, you know, again, that, that you know, I, I was under the assumption, right, naturally, if this proves the, the, the motion of the Earth, then it just starts moving, right? It, 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 it will start moving. It, it hits the gravitational, you know, the moon's in a lot, and boom, and then the ball starts spinning. No, 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 that's not how it happens. And again, someone has to, or something has to put this into motion. And then believe it or not, this thing never has a constant motion, yet we're told we're at a constant speed, even though it's elliptical, which is it's slowing down and speeding up. It doesn't even just slow down and speed up. There is no way to perfectly, um, you know, calculate or time or, 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 you know, just figure out where this ball is going to be. Yeah, sometimes it goes clockwise, Sometimes it will spin counterclockwise. Sometimes it's faster. Sometimes it's slower. There's no uniformity. Now, just to keep this very simple, okay? And let's put this into a real-world situation that would be easy to comprehend, understand, and relate to. You see this crane behind me? Whether it be the ball here that's actually, believe it or not, it's pretty heavy. I know it looks tiny. That ain't nothing. It's heavy. Now, this is just an extension, which would be like a pendulum. So if this was to stay still and the operator did not move, he didn't swing the basket, he did not change direction or angle at all, this will never start spinning. We're on the Earth. This is a massive pendulum out in Earth. This will never start spinning unless someone or something puts it into motion. Do you understand what I'm saying? Again, this is a deceptive experiment that does not prove flat Earth or round Earth. <laughs> Come on, guys. Let's be better. Guys, NASA is getting lazier and lazier. This is a picture of Jupiter, 2014, an image, right? Not a photograph. Look at the, wow, pretty, pretty storm. Look at the, how perfectly circled. Look at the planet. But let's look at some of these cloud formations. Okay, no big deal. All right, whatever. Cool image. Now, this image was taken two years later, okay? Look at what they're saying. They are now trying to say that we have proven that Jupiter has a magnetic core just like Earth. And they have Aurora Borealis up top. Guys, first off, that's fake as fake AF, okay? I don't know how else to explain that. That that, that doesn't. That looks like a third grade art project. Like, I don't know how to do it. It looks like, you know, I don't even understand how anyone can think that that's real. Now, let's stop. Let's pause. Let's go down to the cloud formations that I showed. These are identical. Within two years, the atmosphere, the, the wind patterns, the, the clouds have not changed a bit. That's an issue. Now, back to the first one again. The cloud formations are identical. Guys, this is not science. You don't get to take a composite and you stitch data from an image that you say is a photograph, but it isn't. And then you're like, oh, well, now we know we've proven what the atmosphere is. And then and then the magnetic core. No, guys, this is the definition of pseudoscience. All right, so today we have NASA Images Part 2. And today we're talking about Saturn, taken by NASA, or better known, the Voyager 2. Look at Saturn. Wow, look at this with the, with the four moons. Oh, that was, oh man, look. And that's how you know it's real, guys. Look at the Saturn, look at, look at the shadow on the, on the ring. That You can't fake that. That is so real. Or can you? Oh, you can, and I did, with an iPhone. Like, I don't need all this Photoshop and some of these softwares. You know, that might be for some of the new imagery. They're getting a little better. They gotta lie better to be better, yeah. But this stuff from the 80s. <laughs> okay, so I refuse to waste a lot of time or energy on such an obviously fake, provably fake moon landing. This is f***ing insane. If you're an adult human that thinks this is real, you're the problem. Sir, ma'am, you're the problem, Karen. This isn't real. It's time to let, it's time to let it go. Any adult human being that thinks my six-year-old first grader could not recreate this in MS Paint <laughs> on an iPad <laughs> has real issues. <laughs> Go watch the video and uh, have a great day.
So I'm sure you've heard about the India moon landing. We all saw that nonsense. The CGI master. No, it, it was really bad. But days after it landed on the surface, did you know that India's Chandrayaan, <laughs> I don't know, is hard at work? The Vikram Vikram lander has drilled into the surface of the moon. Where are those samples? Are they only going to be able to be tested by trusted sources? Or can anybody look into this? I'm really into, I'm just asking for a friend because I don't know. So if you're new to Flat Earth again, if you've been looking into this and you're wondering, man, if the Earth's flat, all the empirical evidence to support Flat Earth, it's everywhere. Why do we think we're on a globe? Great question. And no, not everyone has thought that. And come to find out, like we've seen with recent events, such as the CV19 event, if you talk out against mainstream, the powers that be, <laughs> they don't like that. You get silenced, all of a sudden your work's deleted and you're banned. <laughs> Weird. Now don't worry, the cool thing is that history has a, has a cool way of tracking and keeping record of some of this stuff. Now this is a popular magazine right in the 1930s called Modern Mechanics. This here is Wilberglen Voliva. He offered a $5,000 challenge, right, to prove that we are a spinning ball or a sphere spinning inside of a vacuum in space. Now, to this day, no one has claimed his prize. No one was able to complete this, right? But, you know, again, you know, that's all right. Well, that's just one, one guy named Wilbur. <laughs> Hold the phone. Not true. We have other people that have done very similar challenges a lot more recently. Yeah, as late as 2019, a man here named Zen Garcia, he offered a challenge worth $10,000 for anyone that could prove uh, curvature or motion of Earth in excess of 50 miles per hour from two uh, different scientific method experiments in reality. Now, that's the thing, right? We don't need math formulas and cool uh, CGI. Ex in real life, real, demonstrable, repeatable, observable scientific method experiments to prove either curve or motion in excess of 50 miles per hour, because obviously we're spinning it like a thousand miles per hour at the equator, <laughs> and it wasn't done. Which isn't shocking. What is shocking is we still have people like Globe Man Dan, Psy Man Dan, uh, Globe Man, Globe Face, uh, Globe Man. Why are you guys on TikTok? doing lot like why are you on tiktok when you just go out and do the do the experiment real quick you just need two independent verifiable experiments in real life should be simple elementary proof and they're not doing it they're over here getting us banned with bada <laughs> weird now just like 1930s and wilbur's challenge is not the only one these two cases are not ultra rare or you know hard to find Mainstream media, or the liars at be, just don't put this up. Now, this right here is another quote from Thomas Winship. If the Earth is a globe, popular belief, the same amount of heat and cold summer and winter should be experienced at the same latitudes north and south of the equator. The same number of plants and animals would be found, and the same general conditions exist. Yet the very opposite is the case. Guys, there are many many official scientists, astronomers that have completely come out and spoke against the globe. Heliocentrism and how nonsensical it really is. A kin doesn't stop there. We got a guy here by Samuel Robotham. The Earth is an enclosed plane centered at the North Pole and bounded along its outward edge by a wall of ice with the sun, moon, planets, and stars only a few hundred miles above the sur- Again, where was this in the textbooks? So the point I'm making is just because you're having trouble getting past the censorship algorithms that Google, uh, YouTube, you know, so many of these official, you know, mainstream sources, that does not mean that something isn't true. That does not mean that someone or evidence has not been presented and or proven. That just means you haven't seen or you haven't heard about it. So all I'm saying is you only allow scientific method experiments, observable, repeatable science, to dictate your reality. <laughs> Otherwise, you're just in a religion, like heliocentrism. All right, so today we are talking about an Austrian mathematician and physicist by the name of Christian Doppler. Okay, he's the one that is responsible for the Doppler effect. What's the Doppler effect? It's just the observation that the frequency of a wave depends on the relative speed of the source 
in relation to the observer. Very important, in relation to the observer. It's gonna be handy later. Now, just to give you an example of the Doppler effect, it, you know, it'd be like a train's coming towards you. As the train gets closer, the frequency is going to get higher. Likewise, as the train gets farther, the frequency is going to get lower. Now behind me is a little diagram just to kind of show you demonstration, okay? Again, as it gets farther, the wavelengths get wider. It's called a red shift. As something gets closer, they will appear shorter. They get tighter. It's a blue shift, okay? And that's very simple. Now, if you notice, again, both of these aren't moving. One, one of these is moving. One has to be stationary. Now, roughly 1945-ish is when we took radar technology, mixed it with um, the Doppler effect, and got Doppler radar. Now, the reason Doppler radar, we still use it today, and is so um, superior to other technologies is due to it being able to um, determine the direction, the speed um, that the storms or the wind, the, uh, the rain, uh, tornadoes are moving. It doesn't matter in relation to the source, right? Now, as you notice, right, this is, this is stationary. Th this thing does not move. It only determines um, the weather's movement. Now, that's where it's interesting because this is stationary. Okay, yeah, but w hold on. Aren't we spinning at somewhere between 750, 1,000 miles per hour, depending on the location of the radar technology? That's not adding up. Not to mention that radar technology uses line of sight communications. Now, they'll tell you, oh, it is like, no, it, it's bouncing off the upper atmosphere, the ionosphere. Cool story, bro. So in conclusion, this is stationary. Just like we observe, just like we're told through all calculations, you know, that's how the Doppler effect works. Just like all aviation, right? Assume a flat, non-rotating Earth. Guys, it's really that simple. It is in our face constantly. You just have to trust your senses and read the words that are in plain sight. Okay, so the deception that I'm trying to get you to understand is that the Pyramid of Giza is not based off of the speed of light. The speed of light is based off of the coordinates of the Great Pyramid of Giza. I'm sorry. Are you understanding? All right, so I wanna to touch on the most commonly asked question and the one that infuriates me the most, which is, why does it matter? Mike, I still gotta go to work tomorrow. That cannot be any more ignorant of a, a question or statement, in my, in my opinion. The fact that I'm going to have to explain, right, to a critical thinking human being, why it would matter that our, that, that you know, our leaders, our elected, you know, leaders, have lied and manipulated history into a false sense of reality to make us think that we're on a spinning ball in a vacuum over a million miles per hour when we're not? Making us think we come from nothing. A lightning strike, the hidden amoeba that grew legs that had sex, rather than being intelligently designed beings created by a creator, a designer, whoever that is that you think. It irks me. Now. The average person lives paycheck to paycheck. And I'm not sure about you, but I don't, you know, I don't have any yachts. I don't have any Maseratis. I'm not going on any extravagant uh, uh, vacations constantly, right? You're paying for what? For food, water, energy, and shelter. All of those are free and abundant resources. Tesla proved we have energy, we have ether. You can, you can, energy can be free. Water is free and abundant, can never run out. Food. You can grow, you just put a seed in the ground and water that's free comes down and then you have food, shelter. We have trees. You can, you know, all the ancients, they weren't primitive. Why would, why would we make man-made materials that are harmful to us and then charge people when we have this world here? We just, we create our, you know, our life, our, 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 our communities out of earth. Such, you know, just like Avatar, right? The way of water, right? All this stuff. Again, that irks me that that has to be said because that's just the basic common sense, most fundamental, simple way to explain it. But like, have we all been under a rock? There are many other reasons why it would matter that we're spending billions of dollars annually on cartoons, fake cartoons to keep up a lie when we have people suffering all over the world. I mean, look at this. 
you know, we've been taught, we've been told, you know, life isn't fair. These people made a decision, you know. Just just luck of the draw, so play the cards you're dealt. No. Folks, this is created and maintained. Because people like me, if I start questioning, you start finding out some of the inconsistencies, you start questioning the, the obvious lies. You know, what do you get? Oh, you don't like it here in America? You can go back, go to Africa. Go move over there. Uh, whoa, what a, what a weird, whoa, what an indoctrinated thing to say. That's weird, right? And that's why it's created. Even us here in America, right? The, you know, the slaves here in America, we are slaves. And we have this weird sense like like we're better than other. Like, you still do the same shit. You know, we still have to go to work. You are not free. You cannot just quit your job and go out, you know. That ain't happening, dude. So I'm not understanding that thought process, that weird. And what it is is, again, they're confused. They, they understand everything's wrong, but they don't know how. And, you know, well, we're not as bad as them. So it's like you just turn the other eye because it's like, well, you know, I, you know I, I'm good. Well, you sure you're good? You sure we're good here, right? I, I don't think you need to go to Africa. You can just go to Los Angeles. You can go to California. You can go to Chicago, Philadelphia, New York. The homeless crisis, this is, this is insane. And we all just see it on the news and we just, we just, oh, go back to paying. We have to have people go around and give out food to the homeless. You know, we have people online that go out, you know, they'll, they'll take donations from us. Why are we paying? Where's the tax dollars, right? Billions of cartoons, billions of dollars of cartoons. We get tons of cartoons. Where's, where's the money going? Where's all our tax dollars, right? The, you know, right? Where's this? I mean, everyone sees that everything's bullshit. Everyone sees how stupid everyone is. Yet nobody stops to question, to dig, to think further. This is why it matters, folks. This is why it matters. Now, this isn't just when it comes to homeless, poor, food, blah, blah, blah. What about technologically? We feel like we're at the height of civilization. This is alien tech. Not, we're waiting for these guys to teach us. No, man. This is not an anti-gravitic device. This is an electromagnetic transport device. We create, this is human technology. We should all have a UFO in our garage. So we are, we are being kept in a, in a, in a, in a very small box and we are not allowed to think outside of that box, right? If we do, we're questioned. It's taboo. Don't, no, don't question any, well, of course not. They're aliens, guys. It's time to, you know, it's time to stop with the fantasy and acting like, oh, it's okay. You know, like, you know, it's, you know, it isn't too bad. It's corrupt and we know it, but like, not too bad. No, it's, it's bad. This is human. We should all be able to explore. Do you know how awesome our earth is? And it is being kept from us as we slave our days away, missing out on birthdays, school concerts, vacations, uh, field trips with your child. How many different family functions have you had to miss because you're working overtime? Man, I'm just trying to get ahead, man. It's time we get ahead. Now, I want to leave you guys with a quote that uh, when I heard it, it kind of it hit home with me. And it was, change does not happen until those unaffected are as equally outraged as those affected. I don't know about you, man, but it's time to get affected. All right. So I recently made a video about why it matters. Why does flat earth matter? It seems to be one of the most common, I understand, yet irritating questions there is. If you are a critically thinking adult, male, female, whatever, and you cannot comprehend, you can't grasp why it would matter who you are, who or what created you, or where you live, you can't figure out why that matters. Like we have bigger issues, bud. Like, are you are you okay? First off, like, is everything? Are, are you mentally like two? What's two plus two? What you, what year are we in? We got we got some real basic questions to get to first because you're having trouble with some of the most simple. I mean, that is like one of the most fundamental. You know, there's a reason. Most the most of the average person's knowledge on Earth is taught to them before seven. You know, in your crib as you're fuck 
caca, and you're looking up at a fucking Saturn that's fake. It's made of plastic. If, you know, if they can get you to think that you are the descendant of a monkey created from nothing, living on a spinning ball in a vacuum, going 1.3 million miles per hour in four different directions. Well, bro, I can get you to believe just about anything. This is why the average person just believes anything that mainstream science or, or media tells them. Now, I don't believe government, everything's, you know, it's all corrupt and I don't believe them, but you do because your entire foundation is based off of their lies. There is zero, zero empirical evidence to back the globe. So why are you defending it, Agent Smith? You cannot in one, you know, one breath say, oh, I don't believe the government, man. They're out to kill, you know, they don't have our best interest. And then go, yeah, you're an idiot. There's no way they're lying about the earth. <laughs> What? You mean they can't lie about something you haven't discussed or debated since you were six? And did not have a critical enough thinking brain to even challenge your teacher? Let alone the government or any official, you know, aerospace or national NASA source? It just ain't making sense. Now to stop, the reason Flat Earth matters, right, is because we can take so many different things. You take the, the World War II with Nazi Germany and everybody can go, well, that, you know, that's Western civilization, that's Germany, you know, we wouldn't do that here, you know, in Honduras and whatever. You take 9-11, right? Oh, well, those Americans are corrupt and that doesn't happen here in, in you know, in Afghanistan. You can take anything anywhere, you know, a lot of false flags, they happen in certain countries, they involve certain topics. It's very easy for someone to say like, oh, that isn't me, you know, that that's that country, that, that doesn't happen here. Flat Earth affects everyone everywhere equally because all mainstream science and or math or education, whatever, will tell you that we are the descendants of monkeys living on a spinning ball going 1.3 million miles per hour in four different directions. And all this was created from nothing. That's a big claim that's never been backed that literally the entire world believes. They don't know this, they believe. It's time to start holding those in power leadership accountable. So I'm not sure if, if you've looked into this, you know, a lot of people you hear in school, oh, the Earth's core, it's a molten magnetic core. We have gravity, it pulls everything. You just, okay, cool, awesome, when's lunchtime? And then you just go about your business. <laughs> not today, honey, focus. The deepest hole that we have ever dug is the cola, koala, whatever, super deep uh, borehole. It is roughly 7.6 miles. I'll give you eight just to be polite because I'm a nice guy. Eight miles deep. Yet we are told the Earth's core is what, roughly 2,000 miles to the center? Yeah, it says right here, 1,802 miles. The ball-shaped core lies beneath the cool, brittle crust, the mostly solid mantle. It says here, below the Earth's surface, it has a radius of about 3,485 kilometers. How do they know that? We've never been there. I showed you that. You know that. The planet Earth is older than the core. How do they know that? What? Come on. Now, obviously, anyone with a, with a working brain says, oh, ma magnetic core, magnet. Well, interesting. Uh, magnets lose their, um, their magnetism at a certain point. It's called the Curie point when a certain amount of heat well before anything is molten lava, right? But, you know, you got the you got the the auto-generated bot army that comes out and says, "Well, no. It's not ma it's not a magnet. It's just it creates a magnetic field. Well, how does it do that? Oh, well, it's not an actual magnet and we, we you know, we know that because we've been we have been 2000 miles deep to the core even though we've only been 8 miles, all right, we've only been 8 miles deep. Guys, which is it? 
This is where common pseudoscience and misinformation, um, manipulation of evidence or, or, or um, experiments does not, just because you do a science experiment does not mean that you have proven through scientific method experimentation that something is factual. This isn't factual. This is a cartoon. There's no actual photos of the core. There are no actual genuine public, you know, able to be tested samples of the core. It's cartoons and trust me, just like every other aspect of our lives, satellites, planets, viruses, uh, dinosaurs, you know, all the things that us flat earthers are telling you. I'm waiting for the actual evidence. I mean, if you got it, could you link me? So I'm not sure if you know this or you remember, we used to be on what is called the Julian calendar, which has 365 and a quarter days. Makes sense. We were on that, that, um, that calendar until roughly 1582. And then we changed to the heliocentrism calendar or the Gregorian calendar, which is 365.2425 days. Real quick, um, heliocentric globers, they love math. What's an easier number to do math and what would be the Occam's razor equivalent to basic math when it comes to the calendar? Would it be 365.25 or 365 days and a quarter or 365 days and 2425 two, two, days? Yeah, the Julian calendar would make a lot more sense. Now, I've, I i don't know about you, but again, but the Julian calendar, I had heard of it through school, but it was there was no emphasis. It was almost as though it's, oh, it's primitive. <laughs> Stupid. That's barbaric. We don't do that anymore. Until I noticed that a lot of ancient cultures depicted the Earth as a turtle shell or tortoise shell. Cosmic turtle or the world-bearing turtle is a... Uh, mytheme of a giant turtle or tortoise supporting or containing the world containing the world now if you look at this shell it's level with a dome over it same here level now this one tries to show some curve but it is level it is a level plane with a dome there's no spherosity here there's no sphere and they mention the um the elephants right and the counterpart doesn't the Bible, many Bibles talk about the four corners? One, two, three. So four elephants, four corners, holding up a level base with a rounded top or dome on it. <laughs> Weird. Now the coincidences do not stop there. And when it comes to tortoise shells, right? All turtle shells have 13 moons in 28 days. So on the outside of the shell, there are 28 of these um, spots. And on the inside, there are 13. Now, the ancient Scots, North Polynesian, Native Americans all recognized the wisdom and adhered to a 13-month calendar. After all, there are 13 moon cycles in a year in 27 to 29 days each cycle. What's in between? Tw 28 would be the average. It's almost as if the system erased one month to break up the link between humans, the sun, the moon, the zodiacs, and the animals. Interesting. Guys, this is not a coincidence. <laughs> this, I mean, this is symbology that matters rather than symbology like a Nike, just do it. This ain't symbol, this is nonsense. This is symbology. This is what you should be focused on. Now think about it for a second when it comes to daylight savings time. In the summer here in Florida in the north, sunset's 5.30 roughly. We have what is known as daylight savings time. It's a one hour shift. Now, same, you know, here in Florida in the winter, my sunset is roughly 8.30 p.m. I'm not sure about you, but 5.30 to 8.30 is a three hour, a three hour differential in time. Daylight savings is one hour. Why would I move my clock one hour if we actually have three hours of light? It, it, yeah, it's not making sense. Now, that does not make sense unless you understand that sunlight and daylight are two different things, okay? So sunlight is the light that you have or you see while the sun is in the sky or you can physically, you can see the sun. Daylight is once the sun has set, the sky or the noble gases within our atmosphere are still being um, illuminated 
due to the electricity of the sun, meaning the sun has gotten far enough that I cannot see it. It's out of my resolution limit of my eyesight. That does not mean that the electricity has left the, you know, perimeter or the, uh, you know, uh, where it needs to be for the noble gases to be illuminated. So again, that would go a lot more to do with flat earth or the fact that the sun does a tight circle in the north, meaning it would, it would go, you know, you would have light longer in the north, which is why you still have more light once the sun has setted, because although it has gone out of my optical or my resolution limits of my eyesight, it is still close enough for the electricity to reach the gases in the atmosphere around me. And likewise, or counterpart, right, as the sun is in the south, it has to do a, it's just like the arm of a clock, right? The arm of the clock at the top of the arm and the bottom of the arm, they make the circle at the same time, even though they're at different distances, right? So you'll get people go, so what the, what's the, what's the moon? What's the sun speed up and slow down? I don't know. Does a clock hand speed up or slow down? I'm not sure, bro. Could you help me out? You're right. It doesn't. That's where just a little bit of discernment, common sense, and then being able to get through an algorithm or an ignorant comment or statement, a theory, will go a long way. So all I'm really, all I'm really wanting you to understand and grasp is that just because some new scientist or a mainstream, a cool news outlet, says that that they found something or they have a theory or they think, does not mean it's factual. Our ancients were not primitive, barbaric idiots with little brains. They were intelligently designed beings with very, very advanced ways of thinking. Um, they knew advanced math. It proves they are not barbaric morons. Start taking some of these ancient culture symbology and texts, um, hieroglyphs, structures with a little more grain of, you know, a little more salt rather than the mainstream media and or science, which we have literally proven are liars and deceivers. All right, so I wanted to touch on this. This is the moon photograph that the United States and Australia on the same day at the same time. Now, I know your first observation, right? You know, a lot of misinformation and a lot of um, just well-educated people will tell you, oh, well, Mike, we're in the north. So we see how it's top and then see how it's upside down. So that means you're in, you're in the south. You're in the south. <laughs> and you're like, well, Mike, what's the issue? To which I'd reply, hold, hold your roll, buddy. <laughs> Ease up. Let me explain. First off, we're on a ball. And if the United States is at the top and Australia's at the bottom, which it is, according to the globe, have you ever seen an image of the globe? Like, America and Australia, you can't see them both at the same time. I've even heard that like Globy McGlobeface is saying, oh yeah, they're right next to each other. They're both on the same side of... No, a simple Google search. Go check out NASA imagery. Um, uh, 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 Google, you know, if you want to go check out, you know, Google Earth. Whatever you want to do to convey that they're not on the same side of the ball. So if I'm on the top of the ball, back to reality, uh, and I'm looking up at the moon, how's somebody on the bottom of the ball looking down and... So you're looking down and then the refraction, right? <laughs> Wrong, not refraction. Let me guess, hold on, let me stop, right? The moon is so big, you, Mike, you don't understand how big the moon is. <laughs> Also wrong, if the moon, if I was able to see the moon from Australia on the bottom of the ball, well, uh, the moon would be like 7, 8, 9, 10, 50 times bigger than the number, than what we're told in the heliocentric model. Now, remember, I told you they try to get you with misinformation or well-educated. This is one of them. Certain locations, they'll say, oh, so, so, because I can see UK and Australia at the same time, that means we're not... No, that works on, that would work on a boat. That would work on a ball and a level plane. So that's just misinformation where they, they bring up something like an Aristophanes experiment that does not prove or disprove either. And then go, see, told you, <laughs> idiot flurf. Now, guys, that's where discernment and research comes into play. Now, there's a video, uh, uh, an awesome gentleman, man. I, I first saw it on YouTube where he's challenging or he's just having a conversation. He's not debating. He's not challenging. He's having an open conversation 
with an astrophysicist where he's talking about this. And she says, well, okay, well, you know, there could be certain times of the year that this observation is is possible. You know, I'm sure there's a reason. He says, well, no, it's, it's done almost daily. You know, obviously, except for a new moon where, you know, no one has ever filmed or photographed the moon before or after because, you know, it's physical, but we can't film. Besides the point. And she, she says, well, well, then obviously it's the observation isn't wrong. The model is wrong. That would mean the heliocentric model is wrong. Now, to think that one of the top astrophysicists in our country has never looked into this, never been challenged, or never even, you know, has no idea what this is, is another issue all on its own. And that's because you're giving uh, you're giving out gold stars if you just repeat what history's top scientists repeat. You know, these astronomers from ancient, you know, look at the great work they did with, with a leaf and a water droplet. You know, guys, start applying these theories, these formulas to reality, and it just ain't washing out. Tic-tac. I already know if you're a flat earther, you have heard, well, Google, you know, what, you know, how are you talking to us on your cell phone without satellites up in space? <laughs> what? I mean, are you talking about the same satellites that provide our Google Earth imagery? <laughs> Let's dive in. So yeah, you go to your house, you go to ground level, you know, oh, look, I live there. Oh, look at my house. Look, I'm in that bed. We all know this is perfectly fine. Ground level, even, you know, so look above. You know, this is pretty low, low altitude, but it's in the air. Ground level, everything's checking out. You can even go higher. You know, you can get aerial uh, uh, photographs or footage, whatever it is, from these high altitude. You know, this is airplane um, height. Completely doable on both a globe or a flat Earth, correct? They'll even show you, you know, certain satellite imagery that is doable. This is, this is doable. This is within our atmosphere. This is fully within Earth. Nothing that you're seeing here, the real imagery, is in space. And the real issues happen when you go to space or the satellite. Google Earth from space. This is CGI. This isn't real. So just like a flat earther would say that the satellites are on altitude balloons within our system at high altitudes like the U-2 plane, 120,000 feet. That's within the atmosphere. And you can see all the imagery that I have shown you prior. But if we want to see Earth from space, right? Google Earth from space. It turns into the CGI ball that we get every time we're in space, which obviously would be the only, only photographic evidence or videographic evidence that would fucking prove that we live on a ball inside of a vacuum. I didn't just want to stop there, right? Okay, you know, we're seeing this and everything that we're told with Flat Earthers. Um, that's the only thing we could see on Google Earth. And everything they say we cannot see, Google Earth can't show. They go into cartoons like this behind me. But then I found Google, how to measure area. Okay, let's start measuring continents. You can measure Africa. You can measure North America, South America, Australia. Doesn't matter. You can measure them and you get the area. It's accurate. Um, it's provable. Now, the only two places that you would need and or you would be interested in measuring to prove or disprove flat Earth or a globe would be the North Pole beyond 80 degrees north or Antarctica beyond 60 degrees south. That's where the issues start to really, uh, really, really pop up. Yeah, so like I said, if you were to measure Africa, you can go around and get a full, a, a, a normal um, measurement. It shows the, the area used to pinpoint now, when you come to Antarctica, you go around Antarctica, you go all the way around, and then all of a sudden there's this weird crescent moon, and you don't get an accurate reading. <laughs> weird! Then you go to the North Pole, and the exact same thing happens. I mean, how many coincidences do we need to happen until you start to go like, Oh! The same people are involved with the same lies that affect the same areas that all the same flat earthers are talking about. It's just a coincidence though. I don't like to leave a lot up to the imagination. 
How are the uh, cell phone or the GPS ground positioning systems working, right? High altitude platform stations known as HAPS. See the NASA logo? These are satellites. <laughs> They're not in space! Nor are these hail equipment or technology, which is high altitude, long endurance. Hail! They send satellite communications. They're not in space! All I'm saying is seeing something does not mean it's accurate. There are many ways to fake the things we are shown or told are factual through different space agencies. With current technology, videographics, movies, TV shows, you know, special effects. <laughs> Stay vigilant, my friends. Guys, guys, there's no emergency. This plane is not crashing. It's obviously just going over the curve of the earth. <laughs> Duh. So let me guess, Flurf. We just pay actors to, to stand around moons and, and planets to fake us into thinking we're on a, on a ball. So oh, I heard an amazing question that came from the Flat Earth community, which is why when the, the moon is at its fullest, does, does rain not either drop at a slower rate or, or I mean, for fuck's sake, or go upward? Gravity, right? I mean, hell, even me, I had thought, you know, if I'm drinking a cup of water, I'm, I'm well above sea level, much closer to the moon. Why is the water not coming out of my cup? Why, like, why is the water not swelling? Like, it does, it's not making any sense. I know in me, I had to dig deeper, right? Now, I noticed that when I asked if the moon affects salt water, how many, you know, it says, why are there no tides in rivers, lakes, and other bodies of waters except oceans? So clearly, clearly, this question's been asked a lot. And it says the gravitational pull of the moon acts even on these bodies of water. There are. <laughs> but most bodies of water are too small for the effect to be great. <laughs> I'm not sure about you, but that just... Like, what? I mean, that just sounds like some trust me bro stuff. So hearing that the moon's gravitational pull has no effect on fresh water, but it does salt water, had me a little confused. Like, gravity should have no, you know, it shouldn't be biased to water with salt or without. Water's water. Gravity pulls on water. It says pure water does not conduct electricity. Any impurities like salt in the water enable it to conduct electricity so it... Well, that's interesting if you've been paying attention to uh, any of the thousands of accounts that are speaking about Flat Earth and trying to wake you up. You would understand that the, the issue here is the salt in the water because salt becomes um, conductive of electricity. In the Flat Earth model, we're proving through solar panels the oceans and the salt salinity of the water. That is, is the conductiveness of the water to conduct electricity and has nothing to do with, well, you know, the unproven magical force of gravity. Now, being the unbiased researcher I am, we must dig deeper, I've said this before. I said, well, what if it has nothing to do with the fullness of the moon, but the location or the closeness? So, uh, yeah, you already know, <laughs> they had to come up with something, right? So once a month when the moon is closest to the Earth or at, it, at pedigree, tide generating forces are higher than usual. <laughs> That's interesting because if true, we would have empirical evidence or scientific method experiments to back this up, and we don't. No matter how close the moon is, it doesn't affect fresh water, which it would if factual. Now, you know, don't forget, gravity works with a larger mass affecting the smaller, and obviously the moon's smaller than the Earth, so it shouldn't affect anything. But let's say it does for a second. And it only affects salt water, not fresh water. That makes no sense, but let's pretend it does. You know, what's going on? Well, obviously, getting a little confused, had to dig deeper. And, you know, I've heard about tidal nodes. I'm not sure if you have. So I looked into tidal nodes, and they come up with amphidromatic points. Interesting. So tidal nodes, right? It says, also called a tidal node, is a geographical location which has zero tidal amplitude for one harmonic constituent of the tide. In layman's term, they're just trying to confuse you here. They're just saying there are um, geographical locations or 
nodes on Earth in the ocean, the saltwater ocean, that are not affected by the tides at all. <laughs> Weird. So just to make sure we're clear, um, the moon, the gravity only affects salt water, but not not all salt water. Just so it only affects some salt water. Guys, this doesn't make any sense. This is where your intellect, right, common sense, has to kind of kick in and go. All right, you know, sounds good, but let's dig deeper. Now, this is a tidal node chart again. Kind of, it's like, well, what's you know, I'm not understand. What are these? <laughs> Take these tidal nodes, take these locations, and apply them to a Gleason's map or a flat earth map. All of a sudden, things start making a lot more sense. Lots of things are baffling when you mix the models and try to say flat earthers on a globe and a globe's in the flat. Two separate ways of thinking. Apply this to the flat earth, and a lot of times the partial truths, they make a lot of sense. Okay, so I'm constantly hearing, again, a lot of weird things, like the United Nations, that's a flat earth map. The International Maritime Organization, flat earth. The International uh, Civil Aviation, flat. the World Health Organization, flat. shocking, flat earth map being used on all of these different, you know, top level elite government or military agencies, organizations, like, and then what I'm told is, well, what other representation of the globe can you give? I mean, it's just a kind... Are you kidding me? I have... Hold on. See, this is what I would expect when I see, like, a globe design for a business, right? There are literally thousands of businesses with globe designs that are very similar to this. Notice how they're... They're showing a sphere. And it doesn't matter how many... You know, globe designs. It's, it's everywhere. All of these designs are spherical. They are globes. They make perfect sense. So, what's going on? You know, I'm not understanding, you know, why wouldn't this be more what, you know, we're seeing with some of these um, elite organizations, government, military, whatever it be. I would assume you want me to just take your word for it that, well, this is the only globe design that makes sense for a spherical globe rather than a flat level stationary circle. Just another connected coincidences. I'm sure it makes perfect sense that only the organizations tied and connected to the elite families and or government or military organizations that are controlling us are all using the same flat earth. <laughs> I'm sure they, they just didn't know how to spell globe in the search bar. The Flat Earth map dates back over 1,000 years. This map is credited to being created by a Persian astronomer. His name was al Biruni, and he lived between 973 AD to 1048 AD. It's the official map of the United Nations and also the United States Geological Survey. It used to be present in many places before the creation of NASA and the Antarctic Treaty in 1959. Here you see it with Admiral Byrd. This map has been restored by Dmitri from Russia with suggestions of mine, Idia Lenkar. Known by my YouTube channel Flat Earth Benjo, I asked Dmitri to include the Bermuda Triangle and Point Nemo, a place deep in the Pacific where NASA buries rockets. Then Robert Tazi, a professional mapmaker, came along and enhanced the map even more. There are many people now selling this map online, but if you could order it from my online store, I would greatly appreciate it. Visit my online store now and order one of the items. I humbly thank you.